Zelda fans rejoice. The beloved Nintendo franchise was reported to be headed to Netflix as a live-action series. While Nintendo has yet to come out and confirm that any such deal is in place, that hasn't stopped fans from weighing in on the prospects of Link hitting the Netflix scene. As one might imagine, many have weighed in on what they would like to see in any Netflix series based on The Legend of Zelda. Today, Shaq News joins the chorus and breaks down what the ideal live-action adaptation should look like. One of the first questions that come to mind when thinking about a Legend of Zelda series is what game it should be based on. Most of the games told the story of a great hero named Link, who saved the kingdom of Hyrule from the forces of evil, with fans all divided over which of those stories was the best. Was it Ocarina of Time, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Wind Waker, Skyward Sword? The franchise has a rich history with a lengthy, if slightly convoluted, timeline. But it's precisely because of that timeline that a Legend of Zelda live-action series should stand on its own and not be based on any of the previous games. Nintendo has proven capable of finding ways to retell the franchise's basic story in fresh ways over the past two decades. A Link to the Past told the story of a hero questing for peace across both light and dark dimensions. Ocarina of Time told the story of a hero going across time to save the kingdom at its darkest moment. Even the more offbeat games experimented with the narrative formula, finding new ways to tell Link's story. So why should this Netflix series copy a game's plot that will pale in comparison to the source material? That's not to say it can't touch upon elements of the games. The Dark World can be acknowledged as an alternate plane. The Temple of Time can serve as a flashback device for time travel sequences. It can even touch upon the curse from the Twilight Princess. The Legend of Zelda lore is rich enough that it shouldn't be dependent on a single game's narrative. As long as the plot touches on the basic elements, Kingdom in Peril, Destiny chooses a hero, a princess, and an evil villain, the extra lore should be icing on the cake. One of the few constants of the storyline is Ganon, who haunts the hero's bloodline throughout the ages, yearning to be released once more. While Link has been haunted by other antagonists in the past, like the witch Fati and the Dark King Zant, it wouldn't feel right if the main baddie was anyone other than the King of Evil himself. If the producers of the new series do go an original route, hopefully they'll remember to include Ganon in a way that honors his legacy. Because it's television and because it's live action, there's going to be temptation to give Link a voice. But then it wouldn't be Link, would it? One of the hero's defining characteristics is that he doesn't speak. He never needs to. Without uttering a single word, he expresses all the righteous qualities of a hero. He's selfish, courageous, and willing to sacrifice anything to save the kingdom from evil. So that puts the producers in a precarious position. Silence doesn't always translate well to television, so how could they possibly convey the idea of a courageous yet very mute hero? To pull this off, however, would require quite a talented actor. Well, excuse me, princess. The temptation is going to be there to cast an established actor as Link. But it's more important to resist that temptation. Recognized actors sometimes come with baggage of past roles, meaning it's best to leave that on the back burner. For something like this, it's best to simply start fresh. The fantasy genre has done well with unknown actors. A chunk of the Game of Thrones cast consisted of unknowns when the series first took off. For The Walking Dead, few knew who Norman Reedus was before he picked up the crossbow. Just like those shows, The Legend of Zelda should create some new stars, not rely on old ones. In the right hands, Link and Zelda could be defining roles for a pair of talented actors. Licensed property have the benefit of garnering viewership for license, not for the names attached. While the producers do not have to decide on one game to base a series on, they may have to make a decision on the art direction. Excluding the handheld games, there are basically three aesthetics that the show can follow which can either please or anger many fans. Should they go for the more whimsical and fantastical style found in Wind Waker? Or should Link roll around in the mud for that realistic Twilight Princess look? Personally, I think they should go down the middle path and emulate the Skyward Sword art style. I believe it is the perfect marriage of the two aesthetics. Plus, I don't know about you folks, but I'm starting to get tired of everything being gritty and super serious looking. What do you folks think about this potential Legend of Zelda series? Let us know in the comments below. And for all your video game needs, be sure to head over to shacknews.com.